so uh, good morning everyone and welcome to the first session of this 10 days workshop uh, or you can say it is a webinar nowadays and the session is on the data mining and it's important right so as rightly mentioned by uh, vyas sir that you know he has collected some of the information from uh, today's newspaper and then he has you know correlated those things with the data mining and data analysis and you know research methodology and everything and that holds true also because nowadays we are you know surrounded by data so if you just give a brief about our company then uh, you know the idea it is it is related with the data mining that is why i would like to give a small uh, you know history of it basically when i was working in uh, a management consultancy firm at that time i have seen many companies who are collecting a huge data like they are having dedicated team to collect the data but uh, when we you know go into the meeting there you know management meeting at that time they are not using those data at all in decision making then what is the purpose behind collecting those data so th there is a gap actually so data is collected you know day by day in let's say excel sheet or any server or any report form or any other format right but if it is not analyzed properly with the right tools and techniques then all those efforts that uh, a company has made <clears throat> behind collecting the data that is all wastage of time money and energy right so you know to fulfill that gap we come up with uh, uh, an idea that you know we should help the people who are finding difficulty in selecting how to convert that uh, uh, you know data into decision making so what are the tools to be used what are the techniques to be used so by having that idea into mind we started this company Uh, our company name is a state modeler and i am ceo and co-founder of this company as uh, already explained by the madam and as i mentioned that the ba basic purpose of this company is to pro you know provide the people uh, they are you know into the data field in say, in, in short because uh, data is you know uh, you might be uh, you know uh, like uh, hearing that data science data mining then uh, data warehouse data knowledge so there are so many things which are going on so to you know help them we started this company and currently we are into four domain the first is of data science that is a broad subject where we are providing training and consultancy for the data science subjects like machine learning r studio and r r studio then python spss minitab power bi tableau and then other you know tools which are under the umbrella of uh, data science we are also into the you know operational excellence concepts so that are, these are used in the business transformation in the company so we use a blended approach for this six sigma 5s kaizen lean tpm and everything and then uh, we are also sharing our expertise in the research projects so it may be government sponsored it may be university sponsored it may be like individual projects also so in that also we are sharing our expertise because in research project also they have to deal with the data so they are collecting huge amount of data or they are doing some experiment and generating the data so there are several ways to generate a data but ultimately if those data is not analyzed properly with the right tools and techniques then it is uh, not going to you know give you any knowledge or any uh you can say insight about your scenario so in that also we are helping them and the fourth domain where we are also uh, you know collaborating with the universities and colleges for uh, you know conducting workshops training programs and certification courses for the faculties as well as students these are some of the clients uh, which are in different domains like agro economics dairy economics home science mechanical engineering then pharmaceutical sciences financial management marketing management management studies process industry ceramic industry plastic process industry chemical industry and so on so these are the field where we either executed a consulting project or uh, we have provided training uh, you know uh, in this areas and these are some of the snaps of our uh, activities that we usually do so this was a uh, training on spss uh, that is uh, conducted at bbm college of engineering this is on base ses at department of statistics sp university <clears throat> this is also another program in the same same department which is a uh, basics of python and again like at ddu nadiyad it was role on uh, role of spss in the research then these are some of the programs on r that we delivered at mumbai university erc sp university and then uh, you know faculty development program which were organized by sp university as well as gujarat universities so these are some of the snaps of activities that we are doing with respect to the data science and uh, during this lockdown we have completed more than 15 training programs online so we are start we have started uh, since april so till date we have completed more than 15 training programs uh, on this data science different topics and different subjects 
And these are our teams. Uh, I am Hiran Kakkar, CEO and co-founder of this company. He is Mehul Gandhi, business associate with us. Mr. Saurabh Chaudhary, he is also business associate with us. And Mr. Kapil Vanan, uh, he is operating from London, UK, and he is also business associate with us. And uh, you can reach out to us on this number. I'll be sharing this presentation so that uh, you can also send your queries to me. So during, I'll, I'll be you know sharing whatever I'm presenting right now. So I'll share a link in the chat box so you can download this material. Now today, what we are going to say is, first of all, we'll we'll try to understand introduction to uh, you know data mining. What is mining? What is data mining? And how it is you know different than the mining? So that all we are going to touch upon. After that, the question is always there when we are learning some new technique or new thing. At that time, there is always question that why to learn this. So we are going to have a discussion on why data mining is important. And then we are also going to understand the architecture of the data mining, right? And now the question is on what type of data data mining can be applicable. So that is also we are going to uh, see. And there are different data mining techniques. There are a lot of technique available in the market. So out of that, we are going to touch upon five techniques, which are, uh, you know, most popular. The one of there is regression, association, classification, cluster analysis and anomaly detection. So here we are going to just have overview of all these techniques because this each of the topic or each of the subject is, you know, a very uh, big subject or big topic, you can say. So, you know, we have some session on these techniques also, but here we are just, you know, going to touch upon that, like what are, the, what are these techniques and when to use it and some of the most popular example of this uh, different techniques. And then we are also going to see confluence of uh, multiple discipline with this data mining because uh, many many times it creates creates a confusion that what is the difference between data science and statistics or what is the difference between data mining and statistics so how it is you know confluence with that how it is overlapped with all these concepts so that also we are going to uh, see and then what are the limitations because any of the thing is there in the world they are having some limitations it may be anything so some of the issues are also there with the data mining. So that also we are just touch upon it. And there is a team who is working in that domain. They are continuously trying to improve those issues. And uh, they are trying to, you know, get rid of that. And at last, we'll have a question and answer session. So in that, you can ask any of the question and we can discuss openly. Now, let us start with the introduction to data mining. So first of all, let us, that is use my usual pattern that I used to go by dictionary meaning. Because, you know, this name nomenclature, which is uh, given to all these concepts are uh, having some, you know, inherent meaning. So if you just go by dictionary meaning, then also you'll have insight about that concept. So what is mining, first of all? So the mining is nothing but the extraction of minerals and metals from the earth. And that is, you know, generally uh, mining term is used along with the extraction of precise metals such as gold, silver, diamond, etc. Right. So it may be, you know, you, have, you might have heard the term called gold mining or diamond mining or silver mining, right? So if you look at the gold mine, then it seems to be like this, right? Now, this is a very huge mine, you can say, for the gold. One of the biggest mine, mine for the gold. Now, out of that, everything which is, you know, available in the mine is not useful to us. And that is why we need to mine it. We need to extract uh, those, you know, minerals and this metals and everything from that mine. And ultimately some processes are performed on that because there is, you know, huge size of mine is there out of that. Some, some of the thing is extracted and then some of the thing is clean and after cleaning it become a gold, right? Now, which, which thing is useful to us? Actually, the thing which is useful to us is a gold, right? So this is going to, this is our area of interest or we can say it is, uh, the purpose for which we are, you know, having all these processes. So similarly, we can, you know, correlate this thing with the data mining also. Now here, let us try to understand what is data mining. So just, uh, you know, uh, uh, before understanding data mining together, let us try to understand what is data then. Mining already we have understood. Now what do we mean by the data? So data is, you can say nothing but an information. So that information may be about the person, it may be about the event, it may be about the entity, it may be about the product, it may be about the process, it may be about the agriculture, it may be about the like universities, it may be about the organization, it may be about anything. Any damn information is considered to be a data. 
right? And this, we are actually surrounded by data and data is an immense part of our life, right? So we are generating plenty of data in our day-to-day -day life without doing anything. So currently, if you know, you are attending this lecture, then also we are generating a data because this video is recording. You are also watching on the YouTube live, right? So that entire data is generating. It is a stream data, you can say. But you know, in subsequent slide, we are going to discuss that types of data in that this is a stream data, right? So you have done registration. So that also generates a data. If you, you know, take your other card or driving license, then also it holds so much of data. So we are a bunch of data, you can say. Now, you know, this data is in a huge quantity, but now what is useful to us? So that is what mining is. So data mining is extracting the useful information from the bunch of the data that is known as a data mining. That is, you know, in very simple term, I have explained. Now, it, it may have, you know, some sophisticated definitions also there. But ultimately, basically, we are just, uh, discover knowledge from the data. So there is a huge data available uh, there on the server or any place. From there, you are just discovering a knowledge and that is known as a data mining. Now this uh, extraction of interesting pattern or the knowledge from huge amount of data is considered to be a data mining. But this patterns or the knowledge that we are uh, you know, extracting, that must be important, that must, must be implicit, that must be precisely, uh, 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 that must be previously unknown. Because if it is already discovered something, then you have not extracted anything, right? So it should be previously unknown and it should be potentially useful also. So, you know, like all the information and all the patterns are not going to be useful to you. So it must be useful. Then you can say we have, you know, done data mining in a proper sense and we can use that patterns or the knowledge that we have discovered using the data mining and then we can use it in the field. So that is what the data mining is. <clears throat> And many of the time it is also known as an alternative name uh, by knowledge discovery in databases. And the short form for that is KDD. So many of the time you may find this kind of, uh, you know, name like KDD. So that is also data mining. That is another name of this data mining, you can say. Now, if you look at the KDD process, knowledge discovery database from the databases process, then, you know, we are having a huge amount of data which is stored in a, data warehouse you can see here data warehouse is there right so this is the symbol for the data warehouse or uh, databases right so here there is a huge amount of information is there now as we discussed all the informations are not going to be useful to us so we have to you know make a selection of the required information so that selection is done and you know some target data is fetched right so from the data warehouse we are just pulling up or we have just fetching up the target data which is required for us. Now the data is you know coming from the data warehouse where all the raw data is stored and many of the time this data warehouse is not only the one place from where data is fetched. It may be you know different uh, you know uh, warehouses from where this data is, uh, data is fetched. It may be you know different sources from data is fetched. Now that is not in a usable format. It is in a raw format. You can just, uh, uh, you know, correlate this with that gold mining because in gold mining also, whenever this first, uh, that, uh, you know, lump is uh, extracted from the mine, then it is not useful. So some processing needs to be done on that lump and then this uh, gold is extracted from there. So on the targeted data, some pre-processing needs to be done. Now, what do we mean by the pre-processing? So it would be like, you know, the data consists of missing values. Uh, there are some, you know, incomplete data. There are some, you know, uh, like uh, variation in nomenclature. So all this needs to be, uh, let's say, neutralized or it should be, you know, pre-processed before moving for the data mining process, right? Now, once this, you know, cleaning part is done, so it is majorly deal with, uh, you know, cleaning part and making data which is ready for the data mining transformation. So that is, uh, you know, where the pre-processing comes into the picture on the target data. 
And once this pre-processing is done, we have some you know, structured and pre-processed data available with us. And now we can use some transformation and try to uh, you know, convert that raw data, not raw data, but pre-processed data into some you know, meaningful patterns. So here, you know, that is the process of transformation where we are converting all this raw data into some meaningful graphs, charts, summary, and some of the patterns. And then that is known as a data transformation. And once this data transformation is done, we have you know drawn some of the important charts like heat map, then this bar chart, pie chart, scatter plot. All this we have drawn out of this data. We have also made some summary of correlation analysis, some summary on the descriptive statistics, some summary on the cluster analysis, everything that we had performed. So, and then we need to you know have the pattern and this you know identifying this pattern that. Uh, this data mining part comes into the picture. At that time, you are just trying to identify the patterns from all this, you know, transformed data. So, which is of your interest, like for which for the purpose that you are, you know, doing all this process. So, in line with that, you are trying to extracting the pattern and the, uh, you know, relevant measures from that transformed data. And these patterns are getting evaluated so once these patterns are identified it needs to be evaluated why it needs to be evaluated so it may be just by chance also that you are getting that kind of pattern so it also hold it must also holds true for the you know future data or the you know some of the testing data that we are going to test on the same model so at that time also it should give optimum result so that's why evaluation is required and once evaluation is done that will you know bring knowledge to us about the problem for which you know we did this entire process so this is known as a kdd process or you can say data mining process uh, this all stages are having you know varieties of tools and the softwares that you can use for example for this process pre-processing you can use python and r so as uh, in starting sir has mentioned that you know pandas and the python are very important so uh, that is, you know, uh, very much used in importing data into the Python environment and perform cleaning on that data. Now for cleaning, that means what? So that is the pre-processing step. So in that, it is very much useful. <clears throat> now, what are the potential applications of uh, this data mining? So it may be useful for the data analysis and decision support. So as I explained that any data which is collected anywhere, it is useful for the decision making. It, it is supposed to be useful for the decision making, because if you are not using it in a decision making, then there is no, uh, you know, logic behind collecting this much of information. Now, where like uh, data analysis and decision process, but where? So it may be in a marketing analysis. It may be in a management analysis. Uh, like how? So these are you know this is the kind of thing. Like uh, what are the applications? So what is the application then this is the answer of where and this is how right so let's say for market analysis and management uh, you know some target marketing can be done using this data mining techniques so many of the time uh, you know some of the things are offered to some target market only right so in that also this data mining will help on the you know like uh, demographic information about your uh, market that is going to be helpful to you to you know, target any of the market where this uh, product or the service is required. Cross selling. Cross selling means uh, you know you already one customer has buy your product. Now you want to cross sell another product or the services. So for example, you have purchased a hardware. Recently, I just purchased a laptop from the Amazon. So at that time, that Amazon was uh, you know also suggesting me that. You know, many of the people, they buy this laptop, they are also, you know, purchase this software. Now, hardware and software both are different segment altogether, right? But they are also, you know, cross-selling those software along with that, right? So that is cross-selling. So in that also, this data mining pattern can be helpful because they try to identify the people who are generally, you know, buying several products together. And based on those patterns, they used to have some discount scheme and everything. So in that, it is going to be helpful. Market segmentation. So, you know, where to focus, where to, you know, divert our marketing campaigns. So all this can be done by analyzing this data and, you know, doing a market segmentation. Uh, risk 
analysis and management now for this marketing segment uh, segmentation uh, uh, one example that is you know coming into my mind so let's say <clears throat> uh, for this monvita and holix and all so that is for the children right now if you look at the advertisement of this is you know between the time where the now uh, you know housewives are watching movie uh or watching tv right so at that time these advertisements are uh, you know broadcasted on the television why because these children are not going to they are you know user of the product they are not buyer of the product so there is a different difference between user and buyer right so who is the buyer for that product that is the mom of the children right and who is the user of that um, product that is children so now uh, who is you know influence the buying behavior so that is influenced by the buyer right so that is why they just try to identify the time period where the maximum housewives are uh, they are you know uh, watching television so at that time they broadcast those advertisement even this for the social media i just read one article which was shared by one of my friends so he has shared that on different platforms like uh, uh, you know facebook linkedin twitter instagram then pinterest what is the peak time where the traffic is very high so it was a very nicely presented in a hip, hit map form where you know day uh, day wise like on monday the people are using let's say from 9 am to 12 am it is the highest frequency or highest traffic on linkedin platform like that what what is the time for the facebook platform what is the time for the social another like twitter and this instagram and everything so they just you know measured the traffic on each of the platform and then prepared a hit map now you know based on that you can you know target like where to post on the social media when you are doing some marketing at that time when to post so if there is a traffic time and then you post then there may be chances that many of the people will uh, be able to see your post so this is also you know kind of back end may like it is you know data mining is working in the back end so data mining is everywhere so whenever there is a data at that time there is a data mining right it is also useful for the risk analysis and the management so risk related to what and how they are going to use so it may be for the forecasting it may be you know like whether the customer is going to retain with us or not so that also can be predicted depending upon the buying behavior of that customer right uh, maybe sometime the complaints that we are receiving from the customer uh, based on that also we can predict whether uh, uh, this customer is going to retain with us or not it is also useful in the quality control uh, in quality control you know there are several data that needs to be analyzed because you know you want to control a quality so it is you know like a kind of you know uh, uh, forecasting or you can say estimating or predicting something because the process is going on so at that time also it is going to useful that uh, you are ensuring you are you are producing a quality product it is also useful for the competitive analysis so many of the tools and techniques are available to perform that you know comparative uh, analysis in that you can you know have this uh, competitive analysis where you are collecting data of your competitors and you know putting all together and then you are trying to uh, evaluate it with different different dimensions so then also it is useful it is also useful for the fraud detection and the detection of unusual patterns so it may be uh, you know known as an outliers as well as anomalies so uh, you might have you know like uh, received call if you are using a credit card and you just make first time transaction to abroad or you know some high value transaction at that time you might immediately get call from that credit card uh, service department that this transaction is done by you or, uh, like it is not done by you just they try to confirm how they are confirming be, you know they are they are monitoring continuously your this data of uh, spending on the credit card at a time and now you are you know just making a transaction of 25000 then it is unusual pattern that they are observing in your behavior and that's why they just wanted to confirm whether it is a fraud or that is you know transaction done by you so that is also you know helpful in that many of the time i i when i first time i just did transaction to the abroad at that time i did call from the the department uh, the service uh, department that have you uh, you know make this transaction i said yes i did that and after that you know they are not calling me when i uh, do a foreign transaction 
because they you know then understood and they corrected the pattern that okay this user is at this frequency they are also you know spending in the abroad so this patterns are not you know one time as extraction it is a continuous thing so you you need to just you know keep on monitor, monitoring the pattern and it, you can you know keep on changing the you know specification and everything and there are several other applications also there like text mining so where you know some sentiment analysis that is also performed some you know word of bag analysis are also there so many of the time you know this uh, uh, you know we are working on some of the project where they want to analyze the data on let's say the reviews which is given by the customer that was for the uk's hotel one of the project from the uk's client that they collected data of you know top 20 uk's hotel and then uh, the review which is given by the customer now they want to extract the things like what went well what needs to be improved based on the descriptive comment so as we are you know giving in the like we have downloaded one application from the play store and then we are just giving review into it now that text needs to be analyzed and needs to be identify the pattern that what customer has liked and what customer has disliked or what the customer has suggest to improve so that things needs to be applicable or like it, it needs to be analyzed and then it needs to be given to the hotel uh, owner or the you know the management so that they can focus on those area so you know now it is a text form so everybody is having you know their uh, writing pattern and everything but there are also some techniques which analyze this text so they basically you know uh, there is a concept of like um, you know tokenization and then lemmatization and everything so that you need to perform on the raw text and then it will identify the positive words and the negative words what is the intensity of it and based on that it will perform the sentiment analysis that customer likes these are the things very good that is in a positive manner they had written and these are the things which is written in a negative manner or it may be needs to be uh, it it needs to be some uh, it needs to uh, needs to have some improvement so that kind of application is also there then stream data mining so as you know we are just streaming so similarly like spotify you have you might have heard the name spotify that is a you know like a, a music application but they are also you know backend they are using the data mining so they try to identify the age group of the user as well as their interest area with respect to the album what are the artists that they prefer so for example if you are mentioning your age is let's say between 20 to 25 then they suggest some of the specific album to you because they had identified the pattern that the people who are uh, you know let, let's say for example male and their uh, age is uh, 20 to 25 then they most likely go for this kind of albums and the artist so based on that they are suggesting to you then bioinformatic and the biodata analysis so that is also you know needs to be uh, like uh, there this uh, you know data mining uh, applications are also there now you can you know just consider this data mining process with this um, uh, weather for forecasting so in weather forecasting they continuously evaluating the pattern so it is not just like that, you know, the one time they had uh, done some pre prediction or the forecasting and then it will lifelong or it will be, you know, for fixed for, you know, certain period of time. No, it is not like that. They are continuously trying to read the pattern and based on that pattern, they are making the prediction. So you can say data mining is also a quite similar to that. So there is a bunch of data which is generated day to day, every seconds, every minute, every day. They are, you know, like generating and based on that, we need to identify some patterns continuously and then we need to evaluate it with respect to our uh, you know area or our problem now <clears throat> if we look at the history of this uh, database technology so in 1960s data collection database creation then IMS, Information Management System and Network DBM, DBMS that comes into the picture. In 1970s, RDBMS, that is Relational Database Management System and its uh, you know, models and implementation comes into the picture. In 1980s, this RDBMS with advanced data model come into the picture. And application-oriented DBMS, that is a special uh, database management system, scientific, engineering, etc., that came into the picture. Now, see, but all this, you know, like RDBMS and DBMS, they are very vast subject and it is having, you know, like 
uh, you can say if you want to go into the detail of it then it may take you know uh, so much time so we are just you know uh, uh, here we are just discussing that how this evaluation has uh, done or it was you know uh, done in the history so that we can connect it with the data mining uh, point of view in 1990s like data mining and this data warehousing and multimedia databases and the web databases came into the picture so from there actually this uh, uh, all these things are started and then in, uh, in this uh, uh, you know 2000s the stream data management and mining come into the picture because after this period there is a uh, you know the, the cost of data that is internet pack or this uh, you know whatever currently that we are using the facilities that was not previously there so that's why streaming was uh, not done by everyone but nowadays after you know this internet is like very uh, you know throw away prices so at that time everybody is you know streaming everybody is you know here and there you you can see the people are you know being live on the facebook they are being live on the instagram they are uh, being live on the let's say uh, this linkedin so they are you know stream and they are you know throwing so much of data on the server now somewhere it is collected either it may be a google server it may be a facebook server it may be a linkedin server but some somewhere all this data is stored right so that is uh, due to this you know thank you to the internet so that it has uh, made this uh, life easy and then data mining and its application you know become more popular after that because huge data is collected now the major challenges are there like what data to be captured and what data to be analyzed what data to be extracted so these are the common uh, challenges which are faced and then this data mining will become uh, has become the popular uh, in its application and there are you know also some of the web technologies like uh, xml data integration and then you know global information system then a global positioning system that all become strong so that is what uh, you know uh, give up, you you can say it is it, it it has given the promotion to all these data mining applications now uh, i would like to share one uh, uh, you know this incident that in my previous company we used to go to the uh, daily we have to go to the client place that is uh, at different location maybe some day ahmedabad some day surat some day daman some day some day morbi some day it is you know at the local baroda so every day we need to visit those client now at the end we need to prepare a report where date wise where we have visited so that all information we need to extract it or we need to prepare in the form of report now many of the time when you are just traveling to outside baroda and thus you are returning at the late night and everything so at that time you may not have you may not have you know time to record all this in a real time basis so many of the time what we do, we used to do we used to compile all this information just before you know target date for the report submission so at that time we used to forget like on which day we went where so at that time i used to take a help of google every time so uh, that's why it actually records my movements so i just you know select the date and then it gives me that on this day you just travel from your home to you know this place and that gives me the idea that where i have been uh, where i have visited so in that way the data i am not keeping it with us but the data this it is kept by and captured by the google and as and when required i can fetch that data so this is how actually this you know backend uh, data mining work now you might have question that why data mining this is some of the introduction was there but now you might be wondering that why to go for this now if you see the data generation rate globally then every 60 seconds there are 98000 plus tweets are there there are uh, 6 lakh and 95000 status updates on the facebook 11 million instant messages are there there are more than uh, you know 6 lakhs or you can say approximately 7 lakh google searches every minute there are so like 168 million plus emails sent you know every 60 seconds and every minute uh, 1820 tb of data is created so like it may be in a video form it may be in a uh, you know some excel sheet or some other format but it is generated and every minute there are 270 new mobile web users are there so you can see you can imagine you know there are 
plenty of data is generating at the you know like uh, you know a very speedily or you can in the speed of light you can say it is all generated and it is growing now if you look at the history of this then in 2001 one exabyte data was there right so th that was generated in 2001 right so total cumulative global data which was generated in 2001 that was one exabyte in 2005 it was 130 exabyte right and in 2020 it is 40000 exabyte right now what do we mean by that exabyte so the exabyte is one exabyte is equal to 1 billion gigabytes that gb that we are talking about right so we are generally familiar with the you know kb mb gb and nowadays we are familiar with the tb terabyte but it is you can see it is in the exabyte and how much it is so we are drowning in the data so data is you know becoming a big big and very big and but actually data doesn't give you any knowledge unless and until you just extract the required data you did some pre processing you did some um, uh, you know some you know pattern identification and then you convert the data into knowledge so we are ultimately starving for the knowledge from this data and there this data mining come into the picture now if you look at the year wise trend of this you know global data sphere then you can see here in you know 2010 where it was it is in the zeta byte it is given so you can see here in the it is predicted that in the year of uh, 2025 175 zeta byte information will be generated so that is expected by the uh, things and you can see it is uh, you know going exponentially it is not you know linearly it is going so if it it would be you know linear then this line was straight but here this line is not straight it is you know cumulative so it is you know exponentially it is going right so that is why this data mining is required nowadays because there is a huge size of data is there but we don't know how to you know uh, make use of it so to uh, you know make use of this data this data mining come into the picture now you might be having you know difficulty in understanding like uh, zeta byte and the exabyte so here simple explanation is given so these are the unit for measuring the data quantity so bit is nothing but you know single binary digit so if you are writing one then it holds a one bit of data and what do we mean by byte so it is nothing but the eight bits so eight digit number is a one byte you can say and then kb so kilobyte so that is 1024 bytes is equal to 1 kb then mb that is 1024 uh, kilobyte then gb so that is nothing but 1024 megabyte that is mb right then terabyte tb so nowadays you know we, we know up to this point like terabyte that 1 tb hard disk and all that we are talking about so that is nothing but 124 gigabytes after that there is a petabyte so it is nothing but a 124 sorry 1024 terabytes then exabyte just we have seen before one slide so it is eb that is 1024 petabytes and then zeta byte so that is 1024 hexabyte and then yota byte that is 1024 zeta bytes so you can see how much data that is you know generated even nowadays this memory card or the phone memory is 64 gb and 128 gb phones are there right so how much information that uh, we are able to access nowadays but if you look at the you know before 20 years or before 15 years the price of that memory card or that memory that or even the pen drive so that you need to put then it is very costly actually so nowadays it become very uh, cheap you can say and then you can have those uh, in your you know mobile as well as laptop and computers now the question the core question is that all this data which is generated we have seen you know a lot of things which is uh, generated day by day but this all are not important to us so this is you know bunch of data which is generated this is not useful to us but what is useful to us that is some portion of the information which is you know shown like this star so that is the thing that we need for our purpose so that is why this data mining is helpful it is you know it it helps you to fetch all this uh required information from the bunch of the data so to justify that why data mining is important uh, let us summarize it so lots of data are being collected 
now if you took talk about the business then in terms of transaction in terms of web logs in terms of gps tracking it is done right science remote sensing experiments field experiments laboratory experiments so in that way they are generating the data now the challenges are like volume of the data because it is so much of data right? some automation needed right because these challenges are there which you know like without any automation you can't deal with this volume of data and there is some limitation of a relational database that is rdbms there is some limitation because it can just you know store the data and it can retrieve the data but it cannot predict the future so if you want to implement regression regression using this relational database then you can't do that they will you know store all your data and then whenever you need you just provide a query and you provide a logic then it will fetch the data but it cannot predict the future or even it cannot compute the transitive uh, closer and more complex question like what are the which are the products which are frequently buy together so that it can't do that so in that case this data mining is going to helpful so basically it provides uh, better and customized insight for business it also helps scientists to identify the important pattern because scientists are working on identifying the pattern so basically it is not exactly something that they are looking for but they try to identify the pattern and based on those pattern they make some conclusion and conduct some more experiment and then validate that so data mining help them to identify those important patterns so data becomes rich but the information is poor so you know many of the time uh, this data consist of so many abnormalities i would like to say because this abnormalities are missing values or the wrong values or the extreme values so all these are actually very poor information but the rate data the size of data or the volume of the data become more important or it is you know becoming rich so what does those data mean to us so that we need to identify and how to analyze that data so that is the key concept uh, that we need to answer by using the data mining so data mining automated analysis of massive data set so once you have you know like forecasting for example so you just you know uh, derive the algorithm or the pattern that how it should work that flow you have designed then it will automatically do that and then you just need to monitor that pattern only now uh, let us move to our next topic which is architecture of the data mining so there is very uh, famous diagram that uh, many of you might have uh, observed or you, you might have learned so there is a uh, different sources of the data uh, you can say so it may be like uh, internet it may be some databases it may be some data warehouses it may be some other repository like for example uh, uci kegel and there are several other uh, like open repositories are also there like github so they are holding the data data warehouses like uh, you know your like uh, sql server or not not sql server but this microsoft azure server then this uh, uh, amazon server so where some data is captured databases that is you know your local databases in your server in your computer in your system it may be like that and it may be on the internet so it may be from any of this resource or it may be you know many of the time it may be uh, from the combined resources like some of the data you are fetching from the repository and some of the data you are fetching from your local database and then you want to merge those data set and then you want to analyze and identify the pattern so once you fetch data from this uh, you know the sources this data cleaning integration and selection needs to be done now cleaning is already i explained that is dealing with the missing values you know dealing with the redundant data which is a duplicate data right so for example if we are collecting a data of uh, graduate students then many of the time many people used to write down like uh, for example uh, be many of the time it is written as let's say full form like bachelor of uh, engineering right but both are same but th this system will not understand so we need to you know uh, do some pre processing and integration of this data set over here and then after cleaning and integration and you know selection of that proper database it will go to the local server or the uh, you know database or you can say warehouse server so out of this this information is clean integrated and then selection is done and then it will go to this server after that it will go to the data mining engine so it may be you know any engine which can process this data so like python and 
the sequel also it can be there so there it is you know uh, behaving like to and fro so did from here it is going towards this data mining engine then again this data will send to this database for the storing purpose and then from this it will go to the pattern evaluation then patterns patterns are identified then again it will come to this uh, data mining engine and ultimately it will again go to this database uh, manage uh, database warehouse or database server you can say and then there is ultimately a gui so that is graphical user interface where actual user is you know working so all this process is done in the back end actually where as a researcher or as a user we don't need to uh, you know go into the detail or we may we may not directly using it so we might be you know dealing with some of the application or some of the softwares for example let's say if we take the example of amazon right so that application is nothing but this gui right or if we are using a google right so google is uh, where we are you know google.com where we are making our query uh, run so at that time it is gui for us now we are searching there that i am looking for laptop for example laptop under let's say 50000 right so it tries to evaluate the pattern that what user has given as an input so one is laptop and another word is under 50000 so these are the pattern they had recognized and then it will send to the data mining engine and it will search in their in their databases right now here in the if in in the case of google this is connected with the you know many of the websites like amazon flipkart tata click and many more it may be in there so some of uh, some of the local databases and some other repository and from there they are you know fetching all this details they clean it because in raw format like the data which is stored by this amazon about their laptop and the flipkart about their laptop all the formats and everything will be different but what they do in uh, internally or in the back end they clean it and then it will pass into the uh, this data warehouse server and then data mining engine and then pattern again it will you know send to the user after evaluating the pattern that you know it has fetched the correct data or not so if it it has fetched correct data then it will show show to the uh, user so you will have the you know list of the laptops which are under 50000 so this is how it you know works and as soon as you know like uh, you just like that pattern like that means you have visited it and you have some reacted then it will understand that okay so this pattern which we have evaluated is correctly evaluated then it will go to the knowledge base so ultimately it increases its knowledge so as soon as people or the user you know like that pattern or it gives upvoting at that time it goes and increase and try to remember that okay this is this was useful for the user so now next time whenever new user comes and search in this pattern then we may retrieve this data to them right so this is how this architecture of data mining works but as a user many of the time we are not dealing with this uh, you know back end process so it may be a little more technical part where the people were you know purely working in the uh, data structure field or you can say it is in a it field where they are in the database management system and all this they are dealing with so that is more they are more helpful to them and more uh, they are working on that area but as a user we might be you know interesting for uh, some of the data that we want to retrieve from the repository as a researcher also we used to go to the uci or the kegar and we try to search for some of the data which is required for us right so in this fashion it is working now uh, the question is data mining on what type of data we can do so it can be a databases which are uh, 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 you know relational database or data warehouses or transactional database it is also useful for the advanced data sets and advanced application uh, such as you know object relational database and then temporal databases some temporary data is collected from some point of time so that is temporal database some sequence database so it is in a like it may be in a sequential format so first in, in, uh, incident second incident third incident likewise it is in a sequence sequential format some databases are there then some uh you know time series database where this for example this share market prices so that is a time series database so in that also it is going to helpful spatial database text database and multimedia databases uh, heterogeneous databases and this uh, you know legacy databases data stream the this you know internet or the www worldwide web data so in that also we, it can be helpful now see each of these are you know uh, 
the temporal database or the sql it, it in itself itself it is a big subject so here just we are trying to explore that where this data mining can be useful right now there are several data mining techniques so what are those techniques that we are going to uh, you know look at it and then we are going to touch upon some of the commonly used techniques and uh, see their its example and then we'll discuss some uh, you know issues with the database now there are you know as i mentioned there are several techniques and it is uh, you know new techniques are added day by day or evolved day by day as per the requirement now data mining techniques are also referred as a data mining functionalities as well as data mining task so somewhere if you are reading some material and you may refer to this data mining functionalities so that is same as data mining techniques or you may refer to the data mining task then also it, it is you know referring to the data mining techniques only now what are the popular data mining techniques that we are going to touch upon so the first is regression which is used for the uh, prediction purpose so it may be simple linear regression it may be multiple linear regression or it may be some other regressions are also available so that is also there then classification so where some decision tree algorithms are there some random forest algorithms are there some logistic regression algorithms are there support vector machines are there then the stochastic gradient process are there so there are several algorithms are there that you can use then for the clustering so hierarchical clustering then this k min clustering and there are also some other clusterings also available and uh, we are going to you might have you know lecture on each of these i suppose as i was just referring to the schedule so on the 8th of september we'll have a session on cluster analysis using spss so in that we'll uh, you know discuss all, all these things in the detail then there is association uh, technique which is uh, you know referring to the correlation and causality so basically some of the you know events which is happening uh, at the same time or it is a coincidental so we just need to identify those coincidences and then we need to generalize it in terms of the scenario then anomaly detection so anomaly detection is uh, you know basically some outliers or the extreme values are there in the data set so we need to identify that because it it is going to disturb our pattern basically so extreme value analysis is one of the technique which is uh, available there proximity based model so that is also available for anomaly detection then uh, density based scanning which is popularly known as a db scan that also can be used or uh, many of the time this even clustering is also used for the anomaly detection because it forms a cluster and the you know observation which are not fitting in any cluster that means they are anomaly or you can say it is the outlier now let us touch upon each of the technique uh, slightly so basically regression is done when uh, your data is of uh, let's say you want to have some you know expect some relationship between a data set so at that time it is used where uh, this is the famous function of regression y is equal to function of x uh, so that means this y is nothing but your uh, dependent variable which is uh, also known as a response variable and uh, in machine learning language it is known as a target right and what do we mean by this axis so function of axis that means there are many axis are there which are affecting to your y and you know based on its behavior we we want to predict this y so this axis are known as a independent variable and it is known also as a as an explanatory variable in machine learning language is known as a features right so the things are same but it is having different uh, you can say wording when uh, it is you know used in some other domain but ultimately what we are trying to do is we are trying to predict this y when the value of x is given because we are expecting some relationship between this y and x right so basically regression does uh, is you know it check whether the relationship uh, exist or not uh, between this x and y <clears throat> the strength of the relationship maybe you know relationship is there but the strength is different so for example uh, you know one variable is having the more str strong relationship with y and another variable is having relationship with y but it is very weak 
so what is the strength of the relationship that can be identified by this regression it also provides a mathematical equation which is uh, popularly known as this uh, you know y is equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 x1 plus beta 2 x2 and beta k xk it may be you know up to xk so this kind of mathematical model also it will be able to give us so that you know we just need to provide the value of x and this uh, coefficients or the constant can be derived through this you know analysis regression analysis and that needs to be multiplied with this uh, x values and then it will give you the y value as a prediction and at the last as i explained that it the, it will also give the prediction of the new values so it can be used for useful for the prediction of the variable now if you you know the, you might have uh, you know other session also on this but this data type that is you know qualitative and quantitative it is very important when we talk about this linear regression or simple linear or multiple linear at that time it is very much essential that your y y is of quantitative in nature it should not be qualitative that means it should not be a category like uh, you know male female and then this is present or not so that kind of thing is supposed is not supposed to be there right so it should be a quantitative data like it should be in a numbers real numbers right so that is the thing now here the two terms are there simple linear regression and multiple linear regression so whenever we are having one y and one x at that time it is known as a simple linear regression but let's say it is not the you know practical case always so let's say one y and many x is right so for example uh, co2 emission from the vehicle that depends upon the engine size but engine size is alone not responsible for the co2 emission so there might be like a number of cylinder fuel consumption and many more things are there which is affecting to the co2 emission so all these many axes are considered to be a uh, you know by, uh, this independent variable and whenever this is the case at that time it is known as a multiple linear regression and whenever it is you know one y and one x at that time it is known as a simple linear regression so that is the you know just difference between simple linear regression and multiple linear regression you may have separate session on this now if you just you know try to understand this regression then it is quite similar to the straight line equation that we uh, understood in our you know like uh, school days so uh, you know this intercept that is is there then y is equal to mx plus c so c is nothing but your intercept right so value of x is zero at that time what will be the value of y so that is nothing but your intercept or the uh, constant and then what is the m m is nothing but the slope slope means when your x moves with by one unit at that time what change will be there on your y so that is nothing but your slope so here it is indicated as a as a slope right so basically regression is you know you can correlate with this straight line equation that will be you know for the better understanding and then in regression there is a error term is there because you know every time this prediction is not going to be uh, perfect so there has to be there, there should be them there might be some error right so that is known as a error term or the epsilon where the difference between this fitted line fitted line means the predicted value and the real value the difference is known as a uh, error you can say right so this error needs to be very minimum that is the ultimate goal of all this analysis and it should be have more predictable uh, prediction power now if you look at some of the examples of the regression then here you can see the uh, you know temperature and ice cream cells right so we have data of this temperature as well as ice cream cells so ice cream cells is depend upon the temperature so if temperature uh, you know gets increase ice cream cells may also increase and if temperature reduces then ice cream cells also gets reduced so you may expect some relationship between this and if some relationship is found then you can build a regression model so that whenever you have value of temperature at that time you can predict that what will be the ice cream cells on that day right so for example here this data is given so we can you know identify the pattern by using some uh, you know techniques and then we can draw a uh, the scatter plot and then we try to find out that how it is you know fitting well and then whenever this 
value of temperature is given, what will be the ice cream cells that we can predict based on this regression model. Right. The second example is engine size and CO2 emission as I explained. Uh, so CO2 emission is given and engine size is given. So based on this pattern, what we can so we can you know find out that how it is behaving. So it is a positively correlated. That means as your engine size is getting increased, your CO2 also getting increased. So that is why it is in a uh, you know same direction it is moving. Many of the variables are moving in anti direction. So like this way. So it may be, you know, your X is increasing, your Y can be decreasing. So for example, if it is a equipment failure, is increasing, then your life, equipment life will be reducing. So it, in that case, it will have this kind of relationship. So ultimately we need to identify this pattern. It is positive or negative, or it's a, let's say there is no correlation. So all this pattern we need to identify. And then based on this pattern, we need to predict the value of uh, your Y. So that is the regression analysis. Now, if you look at the classification, so classification uh, is a, you know, one of the data mining function that assigns the item in a collection of target categories or the classes. So for example, we have a data of height and weight i'm just trying to you know take a simple example so that it will be visible and based on this i want to uh, i i'm also having let's say uh, bmi class that is uh, obese normal underweight and all so based on this i would like to you know predict all these values all this class not values but this class is right so that can be a classification problem or many of the time based on some features we want to predict whether uh, this uh, disease present or not so one of the you know data uh, machine learning project that I, I was doing for one of my client so in that some uh, you know <coughs> uh, physical parameters are given and based on that they want to predict whether this particular disease present or absent right so that is a classification whether this category is there or not so here your y is not quantitative it is categorical right so it may be let's say for example male or female that we want to predict let's say uh, uh, disease is present or not right present or not that we want to predict so in that case it can be used so we are also going to see some of the example of it so let me just clear this and you know the goal of classification is to accurately predict the target class for each of the cases in the data set for example many of the time you have observed that some of the emails that is coming to your email id that some of the mails are going to the inbox and some of the mails are going to the spam folder now there is a classifier this you know classifier is there in between who is working continuously it tries to analyze the content of that email and then if it uh, you know like found some of the uh, spammy content at that time it will uh, redirect that email to the spam folder so that is the classification is you know being done now there is another technique which is known as a clustering so clustering is the task of dividing the population or data points into number of groups such that the data points in the same groups are more similar to other points in the same group and this similar to the data points in other groups groups so ultimately what we are trying to do is we try to you know identify the groups so here this is the raw data which is available right out of this we need to find out the uh, you know observation which are similar in nature Right. So these are similar in nature. It is making group one or you can say cluster one. This is cluster two and this is cluster three. Now here we don't have any class, but we have just, you know, number of clusters or number of different groups that it is making. Right. Now where it can be used. So it can be used in the marketing. Now how it can be used. So it can be used to characterize and discover customer segment for marketing purpose. So if I conduct a survey, regarding let's say toothpaste so i want to launch my new toothpaste to the market at that time i am asking them some of the questions and ask them to give a rating so that rating might be uh, you know kind of uh, that some people uh, will give higher rating to the uh, this freshness and the you know smell and everything and some of the people will uh, you know focus on the like cavity prevention and everything like this is point of view so from that you can identify the groups that some of the groups or some of the people they prefer this 
aesthetic point of view and some of the people they uh, like its usability point of view they are uh, you know preferring so these two segments will be there and accordingly you can you know uh, manufacture the the you know toothpaste which cater both these things so many of the time you might you may have heard, you may have you know observed that for the shampoo so pentin yeah, if we talk about the pentin then they are having that uh, it is you know specialized for the hair fall dandruff and you know there are several several others also for silky hairs right so they you know basically identify the clusters or the segment where this uh, you know specific group of people they prefer that kind of shampoos and accordingly they uh, you know design their product so this clustering analysis can be useful there also it can be used for the you know classification among different species of plants and the animals so maybe like in cluster analysis on the 8th of september we may take an example of the very famous data set which is iris data set that is for the plant so that also you know uh, for the biological also it can be identify the pattern so if you you know look at the dna test then also it tries to identify the patterns so there is no you know one to one comparison kind of thing but it tries to identify the pattern and then try to match the pattern and then ultimately conclude that the pattern is you know matching this much of percentage that means dna is matching so that is the cluster analysis in libraries also it can be used for you know clustering the different books on the basis of topic and the information so it may be thriller it may be let's say uh, like educational book it may be motivational book it may be thrill like uh, you know love and romance so that kind of also category can be there so it can be identified using those you know the titles and everything topics which is mentioned on the book in insurance also they you know try to identify the uh, you know group of customer and then accordingly they customize their product and uh, do the marketing right so that is also there in the clustering analysis now for the association purpose uh, association is one of the data mining function that discovers the probability of co occurrence of the item of uh, in a collection right so the the relationship between co occurring items are expressed as a association rules and association rules are often used to analyze the sales transaction so basically it is you know used for the sales transaction and many time it is known as a link analysis as well as uh, affinity analysis so these three are all same like association analysis or link analysis or affinity analysis so all are same you can say so let's say this transaction one is there so here you can observe a pattern that uh, the people who have you know purchased this apple they had also purchased a beer so this is very common pattern it is observed right so out of this four in three it is matching right here you can see the uh, person who has you know purchased the milk they had also purchased a beer so here also it is you know matching in this so it is also 3 by 4 so these are the you know things which is you know going in along with the beer so if you see overall then uh, you know beer is having you know 6 out of 8 so all it works with respect to all these probabilities so it identifies the probability and accordingly it will give you the pattern that frequently these items are bought together right so you know what management or what the you know store owner can do is they can offer some discount when it is you know bought together and they can you know decide the place for keeping those items near to each other so that it will you know promote them to buy that second uh, you know product also one of the very famous example is also there so about 15 years ago in walmart a sales guy made a fort uh, to boost sales in his store so his idea was simple he bundled the product to he, he you know bundled the products together and applied some discount uh, to the bundle product so that he wanted to do now which products to bundle so for that the, he performed the analysis so for example if somebody has purchased a bread and then he might have also purchased the jam so that they can you know offer the discount uh, when this uh, bread and jam together it is you know combo and then it may give a discount so customer can easily found it to found them together and they, they, it is arranged like that also and you know if you visit this dmart or the big bazaar some of the you know products they are you know kept together why because it is you know frequently bought take uh, fre frequently uh, uh, buy together by the customer so uh, you know uh, this moreover customers could afford to buy them together as a bundle product was discounted in this way we can expect the increase in the revenue so that was the ultimate purpose now he the finding were that the men between 30 and 40 years in age 
shopping between 5 pm and 7 pm on fridays who purchased diapers were most likely to also have the beer in their cart so you know it is very famous example you may search on the google to you know find the entire case study or entire history about it so he has observed that on friday between this 5 pm to 7 pm the you know men who is uh, whose age is let's say between 30 and 40 they usually you know buy this beer as well as this uh, diapers together now why there is no correlation between this diapers and the you know beer but this is the friday and then there is a weekend saturday and sunday so they want to have a you know beer they want to chill out so they purchase a beer on the contrary their wife you know call them to also purchase the diapers for the child right so that is why it is always in the uh, you know cart so uh, they perform some association analysis at that time they found that how it can be linked so is their analysis correct or wrong so then they went into the detail of it and they found that there is Uh, you know real correlation between them there is real association between them and what they did is in their store they kept beer near to the diaper so actually there is no correlation between them directly you know saying but they kept that beer you know just beside the diaper so that uh, all these men uh, who is visiting that area to purchase a diaper they can also expected to take the beer from that shelf and surprisingly after doing this this motivated the grocery stores to move the beer closer to the diaper and instant 35% increase in the sales of both now if you look at the anomaly detection so th that was the association example so we are just touching upon the overview of it it is in detail like there are so many uh, mathematics and statistics running behind it and so many you know probability concepts and all, uh, all are there behind this calculations So this is how it can be applied in this kind of situation now there is another is anomaly detection so it is also considered to be the outlier detection so basically what do we mean by the anomaly or the outlier so it is nothing but the data which do not comply with the general behavior or the model so that is considered to be the outlier so here you can see this apple right so all apples are green but this is a red one so it is anomaly in this particular data set you can say so outliers are usually discarded as a noise or the exception right so uh, you know these two points are also considered to be the outlier now many of the time it needs to be it, it should be removed right it, it is like a noise or the you know exceptional cases and then you can remove them but before removing it we need to investigate it it is also useful for the fraud detection as already we have discussed so some of the you know extreme large amount transactions or the out of country transactions it is it is also you know useful for the evaluation analysis so many of the time this um, uh, you know data pattern is shifting so some share prices are there like stock market prices are there there it is you know shifting for some particular companies so that is also it can be you know identified through this anomaly detection techniques now what are the reasons for this anomaly in the data so it may be a data entry error that is human error when they are entering the data so instead of let's say 46 10 is also added like 460 it is added by uh, the human it may be like measurement error so it may be instrument error so for example instrument is not correct and you are measuring a height or weight or you know width or any dimension with the measurement then it may give the error there may be some experimental error like whenever we are conducting an experiment and we uh, you know extract the data from that experiment so it may also give the errors some of the time it is also intentional intentional in the sense like if somebody is you know intentionally putting that data in that entire data set which may be sometime you know intentionally put because we want to create a dummy outlier to test the detection method so for example i have developed a mechanism to detect the anomaly so how to test it so intentionally i'll put some of the you know extreme data is into it to test my model whether it is able to detect those outlier or not or it may be data pre data processing error so maybe data manipulation or whenever we are transforming or we are cleaning the data at that time also some of the techniques went wrong right so that also may be the issue some of the time sampling errors are also there like extracting or mixing data in a wrong way right which is you know coming from one data is coming from the this Uh, internet one data is coming from the server another data is coming from your local data uh, database then also it may have some error 
and it may be natural also so sometimes that these are the real values so it is not a data entry error it is not a measurement error it is not a experiment error or not is uh, it is also not intentionally uh, you know kept in the data set but it is natural so that may be you know novelties in the data you can consider that okay now this experiment is also giving the, this kind of result so that is also there so these are some of the reasons for the anomaly in the data so whenever you find anomaly in your data at that time you should think about this aspect and just try to evaluate so for example if it is a data entry error then you should get it corrected if it is a measurement error then also you should correct it it is in intentional then you know purpose is very clear that if it is able to detect then you can say my model is working perfectly fine so now the question is all are the di discovered patterns are interesting so what a, you know number of patterns are discovered by this data mining but are going to helpful to us so it is not always interesting the pattern is interesting if it is you know easily understood by the human it should be valid on a new or test data with some degree of certainty so for example one pattern is identified now i you know provide some new data at that time also this pattern holds true if it is not giving the you know some accurate result then it is not going to helpful uh, that, that pattern is not going to helpful to us and it should be potentially useful so if you know patterns if i am not able to use it somewhere then this this, this pattern is uh, not having any meaning and it should be novel it should be fresh new right if it is already discovered you know by someone in the past then it is not going to uh, give any value to you and it also you know should validate some hypothesis that the user seek to confirm right so then we can say this pattern is uh, interesting pattern and it, it you know the interesting patterns are also there which are you know basically measures or represents the knowledge right now uh, it is having confluence with uh, you know multiple disciplines now what do we mean by that confluence that means uh, it is having overlapping right so this data mining is having overlapping with the dbms that is database system machine learning algorithms and other disciplines visualization statistics so you know many of the algorithm that i just explained that you may also find in the machine learning you may also find in some you know statistics also it is already there so it is overlap so there is no you know clear cut thin line or the boundary between this data mining and the statistics data mining and the machine learning because it is all overlapped you know in some of the areas all are having some you know key differences that you just need to identify otherwise it is you know kind of that like you know this is let's say statistics and this is let's say data mining so majority of the portion is overlap but the purpose of both may be different right so that is the confluence of multiple disciplines with the data mining now what are the major issues with the data mining so with respect to the mining methodology we may have you know uh, one difficulty or the issue because we are you know dealing with the data from diverse sources like uh, you know stream data web data then server data open repository data so it may be difficult to you know compile all together then if we talk about the performance then whatever we have you know obtain or we have developed they might not be you know perfect as we want so it may have efficiency and effectiveness issues or we can have uh, you know limitation to make it scalable to the next level so these are the performance related issues and then pattern evaluation so all the patterns are not interesting as we already discussed so it may be you know difficult it generates so many patterns but usefulness of that those pattern may be some of the time it is a question so not always you will get the you know interesting pattern and another major challenge is incorporation of background knowledge because if let's say uh, if i don't have background knowledge of the scenario and i just implement all these data mining techniques then it is not going to give you any help uh, you know like insights or you know any meaningful knowledge discovery because background knowledge is the base that is that must be there right so if it is not there then there is also a problem handling noise and incomplete data because see data is generating you know day by day every seconds as we discuss but that is not perfect data so it may have you know some uh, incomplete data missing values or some you know noises that means extreme values or some wrong values so how to deal with that 
there are several techniques but they are also having some limitation to detect those uh, you know noises and all uh, they are also having some limitation you know to fulfill the incomplete data so there is a techniques through which you can you know handle the missing values by replacing those value with some other measures but those other measures are other measures it is not the real values right so it may be you know true sometime it may not be true sometime right so, and the last challenge that we may face regarding this mining methodology is integration of discovered knowledge with the existing one that is knowledge fusion so that is also one of the thing like i have discovered this you know algorithm is working or it is you know perfectly predicting this now how can we make use of it that integration part that may be you know sometime uh, a big issue because whatever we experimented in a you know small scale that not might be you know scalable to the real world M many of the time it happens right so that is also one of the major challenge that one may face now what are the other issues so it may be like expression and visualization of the data mining results so whatever patterns that we have found out how we express it uh, express it to the you know audience or you know for which we have done it so if it is not properly explained then again it is not you know going to useful to them domain specific data mining and invisible data mining that is also one of the critical issues like uh, for example in agri we want to mine the data for the agriculture only so now the thing is like where this data is located right so from where can we fetch the data so all these issues may be there right and the protection of data security integrity and privacy because you have you know seen the architecture of it and now day by day security is also increasing but on the contrary there are also you know some of the loopholes are also increasing and the people finding the way to you know break that security so that might be you know privacy or the integrity may be uh, issue and many of the time like we are dealing with different platforms like one data is in the internet another data is in the uh, local server another data is on the open repository another data warehouse so all the all those are you know having some different platforms then we want to face those data in a single format or single uh, you know database then they might have some integrity issues or uh, you know many of the time some security loopholes are also there then also there might be chances if you are dealing with some uh, you know like uh, information which is which has to be kept private uh, you know privately then there may be chances that it may be leaked somewhere so these are all the you can say you know major issues with the data mining but there is a team who is in this field they are continuously working on improving all these issues and that is you know common in every field that issues can never be zero it may you know keep on changing so currently if we don't have this you know issue like if a, before let's say 15 20 25 years we may have a problem of like how to store all this data because this gb and tb and this eb and th these things were not there or if it, it was there then it was very costly but nowadays it is not an issue right so this issues are keep on you know changing and as you go along this uh, issues may be you know different in future also so these are the things that i would i wanted to discuss so let us sum up the session so we had learned like what is data mining and its importance what are the techniques of the data mining that is also popularly known as a task data mining task we have also understood the architecture of the data mining we have also understood how it is you know the confluence of multiple discipline with the data mining and what are the major issues with the data mining so these are the things that we had discussed so uh, thank you so much for patiently uh, listening to me uh, now if you have any query or the question then you can ask me thank you so thank much you sir so much. you have uh, this presentation was really really very uh, useful for us you have highlighted various important things like what is the concept of data mining what are the issues with data mining and other uh, you have highlighted various important techniques too so i have few quick questions to ask from you these have come from the audiences yes ma'am uh, so um, what is the difference between data transformation and data mining so uh, data in data transformation basically uh, you know you are just converting whatever data that you have mined from the you know warehouses 
that you are converting into some meaningful pattern so that is the data transformation stage mm -hmm. where you you know look at the data mining then it is a whole process that is you know performing like right starting from fetching data from different sources to you know compiling that data into some databases or some server and then it is you know some pre processing needs to be done and then once this pre processed data is there then this data transformation come into the picture but data mining is this entire process so you can say data transformation is a part of data mining part process. of data mining yes 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 it's a bigger portion okay another question is how financial institution use this data mining techniques to reduce or control financial frauds uh basically uh, you know is uh, this this is very much useful when uh, you know transactional data is there when some transactions are happening so at mm -hmm. that time it is uh, very much useful so anomaly detection techniques so there are several techniques like proximity sensor then uh, density based so those are the techniques of anomaly techniques so these are some of the you know different again like regression we have discussed the simple linear multiple linear and so on so similarly for the uh, you know this anomaly detection they are also having some uh other techniques or sub techniques you can say that can be used in the you know financial uh, sector or in financial sector it is very much useful because it is having you know you can say it is a lot of perfect data you may find in the like for example banking data so it is having perfect data there is no missing values mm. very less missing values or very uh, you know like incompleteness or that is very less compared to let's say for example if i go to the production department or manufacturing of any product in company they i'll i'll be you know facing a problem of so many missing values and some you know like uh, noisy data but that is yes. not there in the financial sector so it will be very much useful in that uh, and especially i would recommend uh, you know that even classification as well as this um, uh, clustering and anomaly detection these three techniques will be very much useful how classification so for example uh, you know when you are applying for the loan at that time they you know collect some of the information like your gender your mm -hmm. you know this income then your um, how, since how long you are staying at the current house since how long you are working in with the same organization total experience so ultimately they are you know trying to classify you whether what is the probability that you will be you know defaulter and if there is no probability or there is very less probability to be defect uh, defaulter at that time they give you the loan mm -hmm. right so that is right. Uh, how this you know classification is used similarly uh, you know many of the financial companies are uh, suggesting their scheme for the investment that is based on your income so let's mm -hmm. say if somebody is you know earning 25000 a month and that financial company is suggesting to invest 50000 a month that is a wrong uh, clustering that they are making wrong marketing they are doing right so in that also it will be helpful for them to identify the groups uh you know where uh, this uh, uh, you can say like uh, some of the people will require this much of investment plan or some product or services to be suggested to them okay um, um like you were saying about missing data and anomalies in the data that we uh, collect for agriculture purposes like for our research studies we have such problems like we have huge problems of missing data and outliers presence of outliers so that's why these uh, like data mining and data transformation everything is very much required for us to convert our data in a usable format so that we can extract something from it sir um, the next question i'm a bit confused whether to ask or not but i'm going to put that how artificial intelligence can be incorporated into regression for intelligent prediction Uh, sorry can you repeat this yes sir how artificial intelligence can be incorporated into regression for uh, intelligent prediction okay so uh, if i you know talk about this machine learning and ai this both mm. are the technique which is uh, you can say it is a subset of each other so there is a you know a big circle of ai and then under that there is a machine learning and under mm. that there is a deep learning right yeah. so that kind of pattern is there now when you start learning you know uh, start machine learning at that time the first technique that you are using that is regression technique that is the basic technique in the basic. machine learning mm -hmm. right now in regression there are several types of regression i was just you know working on one of the project uh, which is uh, related to the super store data of us company uh, mm -hmm. like a uh, us region and uh, that was for the super store now they wanted to predict a profit 
depending upon the categories of the product which is sold uh, the discount which is given to the customer the region from uh, where the customer is belong to and uh, uh, you know the segment of the customer whether it is from the corporate or whether it is from the consumer or, or. so there ultimately we wanted to predict the profit mm -hmm. so profit is quantitative in nature so we can you know use regression algorithm now in regression algorithm it is multiple linear regression polynomial regression then uh, support vector regression then decision tree regression then uh, random forest regression so all this needs to be applied so all the time you cannot simply just go and apply only one algorithm and just go ahead with that because combinations are required there, you know pros and cons mm -hmm. uh, their limitation in you know such situation let's say for example if relationship is non linear at that time multiple linear is not going to help you mm -hmm. in that you need to go for the polynomial regression right now mm -hmm. uh you know uh, uh, for example in the, in that case i have found that polynomial is giving the best result of 81% accuracy that is r square we usually call about this regression so that was a very good measures along with that some you know different five measurements like um, uh, mean absolute error mean squared so all this measurement was done was done and then i have found that polynomial is comparatively best to the class now this i will give i will be giving to the client that you should use a polynomial regression uh, for this prediction purpose and now they are going to implement this for the ai so whenever you know some transactions are happening or some you know traffic is generated in the store for some section or the client is visiting from so and so region at that time what would be the profit is expected so mm -hmm. that can be predicted in advance i don't need to wait till the transaction is happening so this is how you can integrate this machine learning with this ai now when i talk about this machine learning it may be different algorithms but here let's say for example this is the regression algorithm that we have used so that can be integrated with their ai system now ai is nothing but the you know user interface basically mm -hmm. so uh, all this logic will work in the back end so customer or the user is not going to uh, have this you know this mathematical functionalities and all so for example this google is suggesting the locations and all so that is all ai that we are using but we don't know what which algorithm is you know working behind mm -hmm. we are purchasing this you know laptop from the amazon or the flipkart at that time they are suggesting that you know frequently bought together yeah so that that algorithm is already working there but this is the ai system that we are uh, you know experiencing so mm -hmm. this is how it can be integrated nice nice sir sir uh, with this i conclude this one and uh, it was really a nice session and you have uh, data mining is really very important to discover pattern and relationship in data so as to uh, make decisions and um, we are looking forward for your next lecture also which is on 8th on uh, cluster analysis thank uh, you yes. thank you so much sir for uh, giving you so your much, time thank you yeah yeah thank, thank you so much sir yes i am sharing this uh, presentation link to the chat box so you can just uh, you know paste in the youtubers uh, yes, let me just uh, you know paste that so that If anyone uh, wants this, they can download it. Okay. It's very good, Kakar Sahab. I think we are listening, and this is being appreciated very much. Uh, and, thank uh, you so much, sir. I, I, we are very much here. I could not attend this fully, but to some extent. But it's fantastic as uh, Sanjay shared this thing. Very useful for us, and uh, we are here very much. And you are again coming on eighth, Sanjay. Yes, sir. Yes, on eighth fine. for cluster very, analysis. Very nice, sir. Very nice. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Yes. 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 we will we will forward your presentation to the uh, to all the participants we have their mail ids also okay and for the participants we have next session at 3 pm um, on question uh, on questionnaire development and schedule development questionnaire and schedule development by dr b n hiremath retired senior professor irma anand gujrat so please join in that session thank you so much sir